Look, here come two weary travellers arriving in the little town of Bethlehem on the road from Nazareth. It's Joseph and his wife Mary. He's all loaded down with luggage and she's holding her tummy. Ah, she's expecting a baby. Good evening, innkeeper. Good evening. Have you got any rooms free? You see, my wife's pregnant. We need a bed or somewhere we can lie down and be comfortable. Haven't you heard? The town's bursting at the seams it is. It's full of people at the moment. It's the census, you know, that the Romans have organised. Everyone has to go to the town where their father was born and sign the papers. It's absolute chaos it is. Yes, we know. That's why we've come too. But haven't you got a room for us? My wife's going to have the baby very soon. Me? I'm really sorry, but all the rooms are taken. The hotel's packed right up to the roof it is. Mind you, let me think a minute. I do have a sort of barn, well, more of a stable really, out the back, where I keep my goats and sheep, uh, and the donkey of course. Would that be okay for you? All right, if that's all you have, it'll have to do. And that's how Joseph and Mary ended up spending the night in a stable with all the animals. At least it was dry and sheltered if ever it should rain. There was some straw to lie on. There was even a little manger. It looked almost like a baby's cot. So they prepared to spend however long was necessary in Bethlehem in the stable, because there was simply nowhere else available in the town. And it was there, in that stable, that Jesus was born. I'm sure Mary and Joseph had brought things for their child, baby clothes and a blanket and things like that, and Joseph put lots of the softest straw in the manger for baby Jesus to sleep in. On the hillsides around Bethlehem were lots of shepherds with their sheep and goats. Every night they watched over their flocks outside in case any wolves tried to attack their animals or in case someone tried to steal them. I don't know when they got any sleep themselves, mind you, perhaps during the day, but that's the way it was. People didn't really like the shepherds. They were a bit scruffy and dirty and they smelt of sheep and most of them couldn't even read or write. But they were good at caring for their animals. Well, to begin with, that night was just like any other. Then suddenly, whoa, what's going on? The shepherds are down on all fours and the night seems to have disappeared. There's a huge bright light, a whooshing wind and a sound like singing in the sky. It's angels. And the angels called out. Don't be afraid. We bring good news. The Saviour Christ the Lord is born. Leave your animals and go down to Bethlehem. There's a stable behind an inn, and in that stable you will find the Son of God, the child king who's just been born. Well, the shepherds, all excited, left their flocks and ran down the hills and into the town. They found the inn with a stable behind it and inside the stable, what did they see? That's right, Mary busy looking after a baby son in the little manger. The shepherds all knelt down and said, thank you God, and explained to Mary and Joseph how the angels had appeared to them singing and announcing the good news that the Messiah was born. In the land a long way to the east of Bethlehem, there were some wise men who studied the stars. Most nights, if the sky was clear, they'd observe the stars with their telescopes. Then, one night, I say, come and look at this. There's a new star appeared, and it's huge, and it's moving. Well, that means only one thing. A great king must have been born over that way. I tell you what, we must get the camels ready for a journey... Think of some presents to take, and we must go and honour him. So they did just that, preparing the camels and wrapping up gifts of gold and perfumes, and they set off when the star appeared the next evening. For the next several nights the star would appear, and the wise men would follow in the direction it was going. Now, when you go to visit a king or a queen or a prince, what sort of building do you go to? Correct, a palace. So one night when the star stopped moving, they found themselves near Jerusalem. So they went to the palace of the king, Herod. 
And they asked him, Is it your son, then, the newborn king? Is he here? Well, Herod was naturally pretty worried to hear this, thinking to himself, Does all this mean a new king has been born who will replace me? So he summoned his own wise men, chief priests and teachers, who came with their old books and scrolls, and he asked them, Can it be true? A child may have been born who will become king instead of me? They looked in the old books and scrolls and said, Uh, yes, yes, it, it seems that it was uh, prophesied that um, uh, a king will be born in um, uh, Bethlehem. The prophets, uh, uh, they predicted this ooh, long ago. Yes, yes, long, long ago. Herod then turned to the wise men from the east and said, Go to Bethlehem. You'll find the baby who will be king somewhere there. So you can give him the presents you brought and you can honour him. And then come back and tell me exactly where he is. So that I can go and uh, honour him too. Huh. What a liar that Herod was. So the wise men went off. And that night they followed the star until they reached Bethlehem. And the star eventually stopped directly over the inn. They saw the stable behind and went in and found the baby Jesus in his mother's arms. They put down their gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh, which were very expensive oils and perfumes. And they bowed down before the child. They told Mary and Joseph about the star and just how far they had come to worship Jesus. They planned to go back to King Herod the next morning. But while they were asleep that night, an angel spoke to them in their dreams, saying, Whatever you do, don't go back to Jerusalem. Herod is a danger to the child. So secretly, they went back to their land in the east by another route, saying to themselves, It's true, we have now seen a great king, the king promised by God, the Messiah. <laughs>